Hey you guys, in this video we are going to talk about how does a narcissist react to no contact? Yeah, we're going to get into that. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that it? Seven? All right. I have seven reactions that this narcissist can have to you going no contact to them. All right. And of course, they can do all of these things or just some or just one. But chances are they're going to do something on this list. I can guarantee it. All right. So let's just go ahead and drop in on this list. Make sure you are hitting the like button and showing love for this channel. All right. Number one, they're going to start to love bomb and sweet talk you. Mm -hmm. If they care about you exiting stage left, they want to do something to counter it. When they actually realize, uh, I'm actually losing my grasp on this person and I wasn't ready to let them go yet. They're choosing to do this on their own will. I don't want them to leave yet. I need to intercept this. So now I need to go back to what worked. And what worked for them in the past was love bombing you. So now they're going to try to love bomb you. Okay, this is turning up the heat and then they might have to outdo anything they've ever done. Meaning I got to love bomb this person harder than I ever have because they really seem to have their mind made up about the ending this thing. And I don't want that yet. They want things done on their time. Okay, so this actually can be confusing to the survivor because like, man, the narcissist is really going hard for me now. Like. They never did this before. And we learned, especially us women, because this can happen to men too. But I'm just going to say this from a feminine energy. We'll learn sometimes that we need to walk away. And it has been successful for some people. They walk away. The person gets their act together. They come back together and it's better. But hold on a minute. <laughs> I said the person gets their act together not pretend like they got their act together, not one hour later, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it usually doesn't work like that. It usually doesn't work like that 99.9% .9 of the time, okay? Usually doesn't work like that. Well, Coach the Kid, it is that 0 0.01 chance, <laughs> and that's the person that wants to be holding on to hope to begin with, okay? But hope don't need to live there if you are experiencing narcissistic abuse. That narcissist hasn't changed. They're just going back to the beginning of the cycle to reel you in. The beginning of the cycle is always to reel you in with the love bomb. So yeah, well, hmm, she complained about never being taken out in public. Well, let's. I want to take you out to dinner anywhere you want to go. Okay? And this is where you have to be careful when people are being good to you. What is their intentions? What are What is their motives behind that? That matters. Don't be so naive. Well, they're being nice to me, but why are they doing that? Okay. So yes, this narcissist is going to start love bombing you. They want you to renege on that no contact. And it's actually going to be extra potent supply if they succeeded doing that. Like, I got them. I manipulated them to come back to me. Like, I got them to do what I wanted them to do again. Okay? They want you to renege on your decision. But, you know, don't have that inner conflict that they changed overnight. No. Most people do not change overnight. Scientists confirm this over and over and over. People have toxic patterns. It's taking them way more than 21 days to break it. Okay? And this narcissist is calling you a few days later, a week later, even two weeks later, a few hours later. <laughs> they haven't changed. They haven't changed. They're just trying to get give you good behavior for a brief window. Put the mask back on to get you back in. And then it's back to to business back to normal okay so yes number one they're going to try to love bomb you to regain control to keep you in rotation keep you in the picture number two they're going to act on phase mm -hmm. they're going to give you the silent treatment back you know narcissists can be very prideful 
and arrogant in a negative sense. You know, they're not swallowing their pride. They're not swallowing their pride. This could be, I'll give you an example, um, a narcissistic mom who takes her money. Maybe she gets child support, anything like that. And she didn't do the right thing by the money. She didn't put food in her house. And, you know, she's growl her belly's growling, her child's belly growling. Maybe her sister, family, even her the person she was with noticed, you know, hey, um, they come over, they barely see any food or something. They're like, you know what? Um, let me give you a few money for some groceries or I could take you grocery shopping or let me let me put some groceries in the house this week. You know, I won't need your food. We got plenty to eat. You know, sometimes you need to swallow your pride. OK, everybody needs a helping hand sometimes. OK, it reminds me of that Tyler Perry movie I was watching. And I'm not saying that the chick was a narc, but he was like this business guy. And she was cleaning his offices. I don't even know what it's called. If somebody knows, you could drop it down there. And he took her and his son out to eat. And forgive me if I don't remember every detail because I just remember certain sections. And she was actually a homeless woman living in her minivan, I believe, at the time. And when he turned his face, she was eating her food real fast. So she didn't want him to see how hungry she was. Very prideful. Okay, so yeah, the narcissist is going to act on phase O because they try to act like, you know, they don't need you, but you need them. Right. This is the energy that they want to have in life <laughs> and come to find out they're extremely reliant on other people, passive aggressively and directly. Okay, so yeah, they're going to try to act on phase Oh, You ain't nothing to me. I don't miss you, you know, devaluing you, of course. So they're going to give you the silent treatment back. And and in this case, they may never come back. Just out of their pride, they would their pride would never, you know, you could have been the best thing, but they will never let you know. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Just be thankful that they're gone. Okay. Focus on that. You don't need them to confirm anything. You know what you brought to the table. You know what you did for them. Be happy that they don't deserve to sit at your table anymore. They're not getting any more supply from you. And even if it's their ego and arrogance that's keeping them away, look, hey, it's keeping them away. They're away. Okay. So, yeah, they, number two, act unfazed, unbothered, like, huh, you was nothing. You were a non-factor. I didn't really care about anything you was doing for me because they didn't really love you. Of course not. But it doesn't mean that they're not affected by whatever you were offering for them. Hmm, okay. Because some narcissists have ended up in some really particular situations by biting the hands that fed them. Okay. Okay. So, yes, they're going to act unfazed and unbothered. Number three, they're going to throw another supply in your face. All right. And this is the part that seems to always get to the survivor. And I wish that it didn't. I wish that it didn't. I've made so many videos on this. You got to go listen to those videos to get that reinforcement so that it can stop doing that for you. Okay. If anything, I would be offended. Oh, we just broke up and you already throwing somebody else in my face. That lets you know a few things. They were already dealing with that person. So they were cheating on you. you should all That should validate, further validate why you don't need to be bothered. But yet and still, because chances are you're in your emotions. And this is why you're not in your logic. Logic says what I just said. Emotion says, it hurts my feelings. They're loving someone else. They're with someone else. They're, no, they're love bombing them. That's what logic says. But to you, it's like, oh, they're treating them good. No, they're love bombing them. They're love bombing them just like they did you to reel them in. And now they're putting extra sauce on it because they know you're probably looking you got to think about manipulative people and how they move, you guys. This is seeing the angles. All right. So, yes, they're going to throw another supply in your face. And they're hoping that that will do the work for, the, for them passive aggressively. They're going to triangulate you back in. You're going to get jealous. You're going to feel like you lost something good. Well, maybe. Well, if they want them, they must not be all bad because somebody else want them. Everybody is not walking in the light. Somebody else could be in dark energy and their shadow energy, low vibrational as well. 
they're going to attract each other. And you taking your lessons, now she got to take her lessons or he got to take his lessons. It's time for him to learn some things and get an opportunity to evolve too. Just because somebody else wants them that don't even know them yet is they're wearing a mask. And even if they do know the narcissist, they're willing to stunt themselves. They're willing to stay in a low energy. That's their decision. You're making greater decisions because you want more for your life. Stop getting hung up just because they got somebody else that don't know any better, that's still walking in their emotional immaturity. Stop getting stuck by that. It is like one of the biggest hurdles. And I've talked to many survivors that you guys really get stuck on that aspect. All right. But yes, they're getting two birds with one stone. They want you to have doubts and insecurities about leaving them. That's why they're doing that. Well, it's not you. I can have a healthy relationship with them. I'm making them happy. So it must have been something wrong with you that I can't make you happy. Come on, you guys. Don't fall for that remedial crap. Okay, we got to stop falling for that remedial crap. And then, you know, I'm going to just say this. Because you're so shattered a lot of times at the end and your confidence you've been beaten down, it makes you more susceptible to fall for these games, okay? But we got to get in our logic. And if you're watching a video like this, you're learning the game. You just got to accept it because there's a difference between knowing and accepting. And somebody said this in there. I sent them a summary for their coaching session. They're like, yeah, I, re I know most of this stuff, but you haven't accepted it. That's the problem. Knowing and accepting are two different things. I know you can know you should be going to the gym. You ain't doing it. You ain't accept, you ain't accept doing it. <laughs> you didn't accept doing it. All right. So knowing and accepting are two different things. All right. Let's go to number four. Number four on the list, you guys. They're just going to replace you with another supply, basically. So they're going to be unfazed for real. So in number three, no, number two, they're going to act unfazed. But in number four, they really are unfazed because they feel like they've gotten someone that's equal or better as far as what they can get from that person. OK, so if they feel like they got someone that's on your level or more that they're getting at least or more then they really Chances are they really are unfazed by it. And that might be a strike to your ego, but it's real talk, okay? If they feel like, I ain't really missing the beat. Susie over here or Sam over here giving me what, what they was giving me or more. So I'm cool. I'm satisfied. So they really will be unfazed at that, at that point, for real, because they found adequate replacement supply, Okay. So it's all good in the neighborhood for them. <laughs> okay. So number five, the fifth thing that they do when our reaction to your no contact damage control. Okay. We know they're so image focused, you guys. So they want to protect their image. They don't want to be the bad guy in the public's eyes. So here comes the smear campaigns. Here comes the lies. Here comes, you know, that sort of thing. All right. So they're going to do some type of damage control so that it's poor them oh i'm so happy that you found love again you deserve to have love after everything they did to you like you know they're really going to go for that sympathy and they want people to perceive that you were the problem okay indefinitely in a hundred percent which should be a red flag to anyone with emotional maturity because nobody's perfect all right so number six this is very serious, you guys. All right. And how a narcissist can react to your no contact. They can actually do this with violence, anger, aggression, more abuse. Okay. And then, you know, when this is happening, people go out and they get security systems for their home. I recommend that. They'll go get a protection order. Okay. And just being mindful if, if that person knows where you live and stuff, sometimes they'll move. And of course, they're not sharing that address. 
with anyone that they wouldn't want to tell this person and definitely not with the person. You know, they're changing their phone numbers a lot of times. You know, they're doing what they have to do to protect themselves. Some people have moved states away, moved to other countries. <laughs> what? To get away from that energy in that person that is sent on assignment to destroy them. Okay? So this is very serious, you guys. Yeah. One of the ways that they can react is through violence anger, aggression. All right. They're, they're trying to be forceful. Like, how dare you leave? You know, they didn't get their way and emotional immaturity is going to have them work from that energy. All right. And then this is domestic violence, of course. And then of course it could be between family members. So please, you know, use your discernment Use your logical thinking, critical thinking. Never stay silent. Document everything. Okay? Stay prayerful for sure. All right. So number seven, you guys, that I have on this list on what a narcissist can do to react is use flying monkeys to get to you and pass messages. You know, this plays out a lot in family dynamics when you're trying to distance yourself from a family member that's a narcissist to other family. Blood is thicker than water. You know, you guys need to figure this out. You know, other people are working to try to get you guys together. Past messages. All right. So, yeah, they're going to use flying monkeys to still try to communicate with you, still try to bring their energy around into your life. All right. But I want to go back to the violent thing by adding stalking in there as well. Because I didn't say the word stalking, but of course, it's all under that umbrella. I wanted to say that. All right, you guys. So that's seven ways that a narcissist can react to your no contact. All right. Let me know down in the description if you can think of some other ones. Of course, there's others, right? Go ahead and let other people know down there. And if this video has resonated with you, go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell, you guys, so that you're informed when I upload videos, which is quite frequently a lot of videos. All right, you guys. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just going to say this. Their reaction is not more important than yours. All right. Really, it's going to be your reaction that's really going to dictate um, the success of this no contact. Because they can only do what you allow them to do for the most part. Okay? So you keep yourself in check. You keep yourself in line. You keep your, you stay the course yourself. And there you have it. You're going to have your no contact. All right, you guys. Never give up on yourself. Continue to do the work. And until next time, please take care.